everyone, we're going to be installing a Boss RT3 plow wiring kit and mount for a plow on this 2017 F250. We got all the stuff laying here that was sent in the package with the mount being here. Now there wasn't any instructions sent with it, so we had to go to their website and print some off a uh, wiring diagram. So we're gonna be working off that to put this in. All right, so to find the wiring diagram we were using, we just typed in boss wiring diagrams, came down to one of the first, first ones here. Um, boss's page has got a bunch of PDFs of the electrical systems. We went down to th uh, 13 pin, then wiring schematic. That gives us all the wires for the uh, plow side here. And then down for the truck side. We use that to find out how to wire the solenoid. And then also came back to the wiring diagram itself. And this one is what really helped us find out how to wire everything and how everything goes together. So those are the two. So you're basically, need. we found out we're gonna have to take the battery out. We're gonna have to take this entire bezel off here, and we have to take all these little snaps out. So you're probably gonna want to have a tool for that if you're doing this, because there's a bunch of them, just to get at the headlight assembly to wire for the headlights on this side. Not too hard to get out. Um, got two little flathead screwdrivers, pretty simple. It's not the right tool to use, but it'll work. All right, so we got the battery pulled out here, and we are in the process of taking out the battery box in which the battery sits. Um, it's just four bolts, and it should pop right out. There's a little pin here that kind of connects it to the air box. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get to that. All right, so we had to take off the air filter and like top of the box um, as you can see here you actually have to take out the air box too it's all like one assembly with the battery tray and I've got the couple bolts out back here and the four in the battery tray out so this whole thing should just come out of here um, looks like it's gonna be tight but it is definitely loose One way to get it. There's the uh, air box there. All right, so every truck comes with a different light kit adapter system. And we've just been working on installing this one here, which consists of this piece here. And these two pieces, which go into the boss plow kit that came with, that's laying on the floor. Um, what you have to do is unplug the top headlight and unplug the bottom headlight as well, which is down in there. Unhook those and plug those into the wiring kits that come with it here. There are two separate pieces. The top headlight goes to this piece here, which is a single standalone piece. That goes for the top one, and then this other one is all one piece here that goes for the bottom one. In turn, they all plug in over here. They plug into this piece here. Those ends go into these, which go up into the system further. So each individual light or er, plug-in is labeled for each light. Lower we have lamp. an upper lamp. And a lower lamp label.
So that adapter piece there in his hand plugs into the wire that used to go into the top lamp. We've plugged in the adapter piece from the kit on the top lamp down there. Those will both run into the main wiring harness now and hijack the power that was going to the headlights and switching it back and forth from the plow and to the truck. Alright, so now basically we had to plug the battery back in to find which wire out of the blinker is the appropriate one that we have to tap into to plug in our blinkers and turn signals for each side we'll have to do that on. So we found out here using our tester that it is the furthest yellow outside wire there that my finger's on so we'll tap into the With yellow the wire. supplied clips that boss provides and the wire over here which is the pink one for the right hand turn signal has already got this on it so we'll crimp that on there and then we'll just plug it right in then we'll have our wiring for the headlights pretty much done we can install all wire this. for your turn signal just clips into that and then from there it's just a plug -in and in place system with these two pieces down here and then the control box, the solenoids that come with it, we just put some super glue on them and glued them to the back of the light piece there. And they seem to be holding just fine. This way everything's out of the way and there's nothing rubbing on anything. All right, so we've got this side pretty much wired like we said. Now we're just running wires through here. You can see we're running wires down in front of the radiator there. We're probably gonna have them mounted up against the uh, aluminum piece that goes in front there. We've also got some wires running down through through the uh, in front of the grill here there's two sets of uh, loomed wires that come over to this side we've got this one here and we've got another one that is still down in there that we're fishing through so coming back to our diagram over here we've got the driver side the wiring diagram we've got violet is the left turn and we've got yellow as the park or running lights so here, here we have them run over here now. And these just run into this main wiring harness that we had laying out on the floor over here. Right now we've got the blue with the green line through it wire spliced as our turn signal, which is what our purple wire is gonna run into. And then our yellow one, we're gonna have to splice for our parking lights, which will now be another one in there. What we've done now is unplug this one here, which is your running light that goes into this one here. And it is the green and yellow one, which is the bigger wire here. That's your positive, which you're gonna have to splice into and put another one of those splices on it, in turn plugging in your yellow wire here. Then once we're done with that, we'll have all the wiring for the light system done and complete. All right, so we've finished connecting the headlights and wiring the headlights on both sides. We've run all the wires along the back side of this cross member and we're just gonna zip tie them up. Boss includes a bunch of zip ties with the kit so they expect that's how you're gonna attach the wires to the frame and whatnot. Now we've gotta run the wires through the firewall into the cab to connect to your controller and to connect to the switch that switches the headlights from the truck to the plow and the power to the plow once you have the plow attached. We also have to put the battery and the air box stuff back in. Um, we're going to wait till we do that until we test everything out and make sure everything's hooked up properly. Uh, we got to put the battery in to test it obviously and then we've got to connect all these wires here to the battery as described in the uh, instructions which we'll find out how to do in a bit here. Um, we've also got to run the solenoid over here and the power that runs down to your plow connection. So we're going to go ahead and finish up doing that right now as well. All right, so now we're working on the solenoid. This has got a uh, dual burn kit for the headlights. That means it'll run the high and low beams on the plow at the same time. So they already pre-wired that into everything here, which is why we have extra wires compared to what is shown on the diagram here with just these, just these four here. Um, now this is one other sheet we found online from... Uh, boss that they gave us and I was wondering myself it says location of the wires on the small terminals does not matter so that would be these two here which we were having issues figuring out where to go because nothing on this solenoid is labeled 
and we have the one red power wire which runs over and connects to our positive battery terminal. We've got two white and black wires and there usually would just be one but because this has got a dual burn kit on it which means the high and the low beam on the plow will run at the same time when you turn the high beams on therefore providing more light. There's two white and black wires and there's also an extra wire that runs to your positive battery terminal with a tag on it. So we've also got two brown wires coming out of this section. One is a ground just going right to your um, goes directly to your battery terminal and then another one goes onto here. So these two can go on either side. They can be reversed. It does not matter. One of these powers comes directly from the battery terminal and then the other side will be the power out that's connected to the two piece connector that runs down to the front and connects to your plow. Um, pretty straightforward and then we've got the two fused wires, red fused wires coming out of here run directly to your power as well. Now we're going to connect the other positive that runs down to your plow connection into our solenoid here. And it shouldn't matter which side the connection's on. Perfect. Okay, so now we're going to Okay, so now we are going to take the positive connector for our wires that run down to the plow. We're going to put it on the other side of the solenoid. Just leave it loose because I'm not sure where we're going to mount the solenoid as of now. Just have it hand tight. We're going to set that down there. So now everything on this side, on this side, should be wired. See, so we've got everything wired to the solenoid. We've got all the wires running to the connectors. We've got all the headlights done. Now we just have to run everything into the truck and finish wiring it that way and we can begin testing. All right, so to take off the, so to put on the plow rack, we have to take off the front bumper of the truck. We have to take off the, the air dam underneath as well. Um, basically, there were two pieces that went right, right here on the frame like such. You just take those bolts off, that thing comes right off. And then these go in place of that. Uh, boss supplies all the hardware and everything, so you put new hardware in. And then you have to take the sway bar off, and then the back end sets up into the sway bar where the two bolts that hold the sway bar sway bar on are. And it bolts up pretty easily. We got it done in probably 30 minutes. You can see the four bolts holding on the rack on the bottom. Boss recommends to have them staggered like that, where this one is one lower than your top one over here, and the bottom two are the same height. Uh, we also, you have to measure your plow that you're going to be hooking it up to and see how high you want to have your um, hooks off the ground so it meets up with that plow. So, what we were talking about with having the sway bar pieces come off is we had to undo those. We have to undo the sway bar link because this piece here, if you can see that, has got to fit in between here and we can't do that unless we pull this down and take off the whole bumper as well. You're going to have to take off the bumper because to get these out and put those in you have to reach inside the frame to get a wrench in there to hold those on. So the bumper definitely has to come off. Pretty straightforward. Uh, Boss includes a direction manual on which bolts go where, what size bolts. Uh, it does look like they did give us a few extra bolts. Looks like it was a universal mounting system. 
that just works for every vehicle. So we had a few extra bolts left over. They also did include a bolts to replace the the ones that are with the sway bar, those two. But because of this cross beam here, we can't get this one out and we can't get our hand pass to grab that one. So we just left them in, we're gonna run with it. Hopefully it holds out. We also had to disconnect the sway bar completely, basically to get it on there. So we have to connect that yet. And then basically we just have to put the bumper on and then we have to um, take our measurement to cut the holes in the air dam for the for the bracket to fit through. So we're moving along pretty smoothly. Everything is working pretty good. We got all the wiring done, so we just got to put the bumper and stuff back on and test it out. done is wired into our auxiliary upfitter switches. We've got it on number four. We've got the lights on. What we did instead of having the switch piece, we just cut the two wires that would go together here, put them together, and then we ran the third wire that was told to be connected to a key, or the key on power. We just connected that to the auxiliary. So as soon as we flip the auxiliary, it acts as the power's on and then these two ground each other out, so on and so forth, and then it works. So you wanna jump in there, Colsey, and give her a test, make sure everything works. We've just got everything sitting over in here for now, just laying there for test purposes. Looks like he switched the lights back to the truck, now their auxiliary's back on. Looks like everything works. Lights work. Running lights, headlights. Hit the high beam. Dual burn on the high beams, that means the low beams stay on, they don't turn off. Works good. All right, so we just wrapped it up. We still have to cut a few uh, pieces in the air dam to get the to get the uh, mount pieces to stick through. And uh, other than that, we got everything under the hood put back together. We just mounted this right here. That was the best spot we could find for the uh, solenoid. Ran all the wires down through here, came up around the other side of the terminal. Everything else is ran down underneath here. Over to the headlight, then over so, here. That's about all it takes to do this. Probably took us eight hours to do. A leisurely eight hours. Boss says it'll take four and a half, so. I'd imagine you could get it done in four and a half to five if you have two people who know what they're doing. But uh, let us know what you think. How would you do it on your truck? <laughs>